The Quran's case against the crucifixion is that it did happen, but it just didn't happen to Jesus Christ. That's not why I asked you. I, I said, said where it shows that he did not die. It's 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 deception. Why is it logically impossible for a, an all-powerful God to deceive? Shift. Because his nature is truth. Can God do everything? Truth cannot can, have deception. Can God do everything? Fly. Fly. In your nature to fly. You, yes, fly. I can fly. You can fly. Show, show us, come on. Mom, you just have this. Fly, 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 show us. Has God got the ability to deceive? Yes or no? Do you have the ability to fly? No. No, he doesn't have the ability. No. Because it's not in his nature. I think this is done. You can run up. Are you ready? Go on! Thank you very much. Well, well, no. I'm uh, known as, but it might not be the reality. It might not be the reality. <laughs> nah, 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 it's good. It's good. So, obviously, the, the subject I wanted to speak about was sleep. Um, I was just, the reason, because we wanted to talk about Deuteronomy 1818. If you're confident to speak about that, we'll talk about that. If not, let's speak about a, a more um, something that you are confident about, which is obviously sin and Islam. And I don't mind. Uh, sin is a nice subject. I think we can talk about sin. Okay, so, so, so we won't do the show in 1880. It's up to you. You can talk about whatever you want. Look, I'm asking you, what would you what would be more confident? What would you, would you think you'd be able to assert yourself better? The, I have no problem. Okay, let's start with Deuteronomy 1880. Yeah? Okay. I'm asking you. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Deuteronomy 1880. Okay, Deuteronomy 1880. Okay, so what we would like you to do, okay, let's get, let's get it out. That's the best place to start. Let's get out Deuteronomy 1880 and then let's look at what it actually says. And I would like you to show me how it speaks about or prophesies about Muhammad. Well, I said to you in the beginning, I think you asked me that question. Yeah, I said to yeah. you, if I were to choose a verse in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, that I could confidently say, you know, it speaks about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If I'm being completely honest with you, I wouldn't choose Deuteronomy 18. So you wouldn't choose it? So it's no, not I, would, that's what I, I wouldn't choose you. that should one. Start I would choose uh, Isaiah 42, the whole chapter. Okay. We, I specifically asked you, because remember the subject initially was to talk about sin. So I said, are you confident enough? Because the subject today we're doing, is the Trinity 1818? Are you, are you in a position? Yeah, no, I've given you my so, p position on that. You've asked me about it. Right. So if I if I had to bet money on it, if I say, is it talking about Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad? I'll say maybe. I'll say it's a big probability. So, okay, so but I couldn't tell you certainly. Good. So, wait, so wait, wait, before you go there, the, the Quran says Muhammad is mentioned in the Torah and the Injil. Yeah. Yes. Deuteronomy is one part of the Torah. Pardon? So where Deuteronomy is part of the Torah. Yes. So where in the Torah is Muhammad mentioned? Because the, the Quran claims. Muhammad is in the Torah. No, you make a good point. So you say, the Quran says, yeah, so you see that you see them, you see him written in their Torah and Injil. Yeah, so That's a, yes. Yeah. So there's two things you have to appreciate. That the Quran very explicitly says in chapter 3, verse 78, not chapter 2, verse 79. Because there are more than there are many verses, but I'm check I'm checking Google chapter Google corruption. Pardon? Yeah. Yeah. Corrupt. Chapter three, verse seventy-eight. Not chapter two, verse seventy-nine. Chapter three. Yeah? Yes. Chapter three says. وَإِنَّ لَفَرِيقًا يَلْوُونَ أَلْسِنَتَهُمْ لِيَقُولُونَ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ وَلَيْسَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَيَقُولُونَ هُوَ مِنْ الْكِتَابِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنْ الْكِتَابِ just say it in English, you know English, just say it in English. You save time, just say it in English. It says that, in chapter 78, verse 78, it says that from the Jews and the Christians, not just the Jews, because in chapter 2, verse 79, it talks just about the Jews. فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتَبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا This is chapter 2, verse 78. But chapter 3, sorry, chapter 2, verse 79. Chapter 3, verse 78, it says Jews and Christians. So the legitimacy of the Bible as we know it, according to these verses, is in question entirely. But once again, as I said to you before, if we were to choose one, one place in the Bible, if I were to, am I looking at the Bible, choose one place in the Bible where I feel like Prophet Muhammad is being mentioned, it will be Isaiah 42, not necessarily Deuteronomy 18.18. But you know, you know that what you're saying now, as you're saying essentially that Allah has has corrupted, I mean, Allah has put Muhammad's name in a corrupted book. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, it, actually, yes, because the, here's, here's what it says in the Quran in chapter 5. It says, Why, 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 why would Allah? That's not, so the Quran answers the question. Yeah, go on. 
Did you know the Quran answers this question? You tell us what it says in chapter oh, 5. Said. Yes, verse it, it, uh, I'll, I'll try and think of it. I'll tell you in Arabic and then you can... Um, uh, no, 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 we want English. We want English. No, no, English. no, 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 no Arabic. Arabic. Muhammad, I don't know English. why I remember the verses. Okay. Ayah. Just Ayah. Am I showing off? Okay. Ayah. You know you're Arabic. No, 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 honestly. No, we want, I want to translate. We want to know we because we've been hearing this from Muslims all along. And you okay. know, just before you say it, just before you say it, just yeah. a little bit. Let's go ahead. Hamza, I, I kind of, not respect, but I, I appreciate Hamza has given up on Detroit in 1818. He said, I'm no longer going to use Detroit in 1818. We've confronted I don't know what him. Hamza said. I, no, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just saying. Nobody wants to defend Nobody wants to defend it. I don't think that's thrown under the bus. My position, so, so what's your position? Yeah, my position with Deuteronomy 1818 is that it's really an ambiguous verse, if we're being totally honest. But with with uh, chapter 42 of Isaiah, I think it's more clear. Yeah, it's clear. Why do you think it's ambiguous? Is it clear or is it ambiguous? Yeah. What is it? It's a clear in parts and ambiguous in other parts. Okay. Yeah. Can we can we read it and tell us which? We, I couldn't tell you. I would put my life on the fact. That Deuteronomy 1818 yeah. is talking about Prophet Muhammad. But I could tell you, I have a high degree of certainty that Isaiah 42, especially verses 11 onwards, is talking about Prophet Muhammad. I know that's where you okay, want to but go. What? Please just unpack a little bit why you two are distancing yourself from this verse. What I have no idea that was that was done independently. I have not seen that he's done that. To have doubts. I have no doubt in the reality of the Quran, right? No, I'm no, a scripturalist. Yes, yes. I'm yeah. Why are you having doubts about Deuteronomy 18, 18 being about Muhammad? Like Jamal Dawi, for example, he's been asked. You have loads of people who are saying, aha, this is where we well, find yes, Muhammad yes. in the Bible. And now you yeah, they also use that in John chapter. Is it and John 14, 6? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, is it John 14, 6? 16. Yeah. Uh, 16, yeah? 16. Uh, where it says the comfort yeah. So to make yeah. it clear, yeah, no, no, no. So, so, so for me, every Muslim is is, is 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 entitled to their own academic perspective. So for me, when I when I see the paraclete being mentioned, no, 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 so that's Muhammad. No, 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 no. For you, that's Muhammad. No, 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 no. I'm, no, I'm giving you. The, yeah. I disagree with the. I disagree. I disagree with them. I disagree with the fact that it's totally. Uh, uh, it's totally clear cut in that manner. Just like I made a whole series of uh, Zakir Naik disagreeing with his interpretation of the so-called scientific verse of the Quran. So, but, okay, so tell us. Though, I don't. I don't so, so, agree with everything everyone says. Why you've gone against that view? I don't think it's that explicit that we could derive as a matter of certainty with the parameters that are set in that verse that it's definitely talking about the Prophet Muhammad. It doesn't lead us definitively to Prophet Muhammad. Whereas I would argue Isaiah 42 verse 11 in particular does. So Isaiah is the Tanakh. It's not the Torah of the Injil. No problem. Yeah? Yeah. So the Quran does not mention about the Tanakh. It mentions about the Torah and the Injil. Yeah? Yes. So we're going to Surah 5157 where it says Muhammad yeah. is mentioned in the Torah and the Injil. It's not five, just chapter seven of the Quran. Yeah, that's why I said chapter seven verse one five seven. Seven one five seven. Sorry if I said five. So that's why we're asking you to back up the position of the Quran. Seven one five seven. Yeah, yeah. Where? Okay, if it's not Deuteronomy eighteen. Yes. Where in the where Torah is mentioned? Where in the Torah? Uh, okay, right. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. In the scholars Torah, of Islam, not Isaiah, because that's the Tanakh. The scholars of Islam say about this verse that yeah, you do know who in the Torah and Injil. But we're gonna fall asleep. Keep it Arabic. Just speak in English. You know you can do it. No, no the verse we talked about in one five seven of chapter seven of the Quran. That the Torah and the Injil, because the Quran says yes. that they are not preserved. So now, because the Quran says in chapter five of the Quran, we must stop the domain kitab illah. That the, the Allah, unlike the Quran, Allah has entrusted the Quran. He himself preserved it. It says in chapter fifteen, verse seventeen, that inna nahnu azzalna dikra wa inna lahu lahabdun. Preserved what? I'll tell you what it says. So it says in the Quran, inna nahnu azzalna dikra wa inna lahu lahabdun. We have certainly sent down the Quran and we will protect it. Whereas with the Bible and the Torah and Injil, he says about them in, 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 the, in the Quran. He must talk to him in Kitab Allah that he entrusted, that Allah entrusted the preservation of the Torah and the Injil on the rabbis, and they did not do a good job of that. So, why is he telling Christians and Jews to stand on the Torah and the Injil and they can't stand on anything else except the Torah and the Injil? No, 968. Uh, same chapter. No, chapter five. You're yeah, talking, yeah, same chapter. So here, yeah. yeah. So, so he's contradicting himself. You're no, 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 it's a, it's a good question. Let me answer it for you. Yeah, go. فَلْيَحْكُمْ أَهْلُ الْإِنْجِيلِ بِمَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ 
<laughs> that's what it says. Just say it's English. Black. Everybody here speaks English. No, no, no. Stop showing up. Do you speak Arabic from Monday to Saturday? And then Sunday, you're like, whoa. I'm working. I'm working. He's amazing Arabic. He's amazing Arabic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know you're a brilliant Arabic speaker. I'm not. Now, who is just speaking? I'm actually not using my ability in Arabic here. I'm just literally copying what it says in the Quran and presenting it to you. You give it a Yeah, just The Quran says that. Let the the reason why is because I can translate it for you. At least that's what I'm not. Yeah, please translate yeah, so, it. Yeah, that let the people of the Injil, i.e. the Christians, yeah. By what Allah has revealed therein. Fee here. Surah five forty eight, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah in, in that section, from verses whatever. I don't know what verse it means. Bima Allah Fi means in it. So we don't deny that there are verses in the Torah and the Injil which are still preserved. Okay. And so that's why the next parts of the, the verse it says where Muhaymin and Ali. The very Muhaymin in Arabic language means it's a it's a decipherer, it's a guardian over the, that which came before. Okay. In other words, it saves the truth from the falsehood. There's a hadith narrated by and Ibn Abbas narrates in Sahih Muslim that with the with the Torah and the Ibn Abbas Good. is the cousin of oh sorry. Yes. Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was a uh, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about him Allahumma faqihu fi fi ta'wil Allahumma atihi ta'wil I forgot what he said he said that may Allah give him the ability to interpret the book so he's seen as probably the highest authority in terms of interpretation of the Quran and Sahih Muslim Ibn Abbas says that the, the Torah and the Injil that there are some parts of it which you can accept and parts of it which you have to reject do you know which parts? which parts? Those parts which are in uh, contradiction with the Quran. Okay, see the problem we're having here. Yes. Because the, the idea is because the, so the the, 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 the nutshell here, the, the the moral of the story, chapter three verses uh, seventy nine onwards. Yeah, sorry, seventy eight onwards, and uh, other verses of the Quran, many of them. You have the al Kalima Amma There's so many verses that talk about the Jews and the Christians having corrupted the book. They threw it behind their back. So many verses, right? So here, yeah, but which verses are corrupted? The, the verses we know for sure, okay. that because here's, here's what the Prophet told us. He gave us advice on this. He gave us advice. The verses we know for sure are corrupted are those which go against the, the Quran. For example, in the, in the New Testament, those which talk about crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. Okay, let's talk about that. Let's, 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 let's get to, because we want to get some of this, yes? Okay, so let's take, for example, you just mentioned crucifixion. Yes. The verses that speak about crucifixion are corrupted. Okay, can you give us uh, a no, source? Resurrection. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're going to talk about crucifixion. That. Saying, you, just meant, yeah, you just mentioned crucifixion, so I just want to just get it home in a little bit on one subject so that we're not all over the place. Oh, right. you can talk about sin. That's just just a minute, just a minute. No, no, no. Let's just home in. Let's home in. What you don't, don't get ready to run, Mohammed. I can feel it. I can feel you're ready to, no, but you're, to you're, hit. You're, no, you're but heavyweight. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish my point. Really hurt Let me finish my point. So, yes. you specifically mentioned parts of the Bible is corrupt. For example, the crucifixion. So my question to you is, can you give me any source? Yes. Okay. Yes. Any source? Okay. Other than the Quran. No. Any any source? Other than the Quran. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that that shows. Yeah. Okay. Apart from Muhammad. Yes, yes. Okay. And um, Islamic sources. Away from Islamic sources. So we're talking about secular sources. Yes, atheists, yes. Jews. To show that Jesus did not die. Yes, yes. And there is there is a source in the in the um the the, the, the Talmud of the Jews. They say that Jesus Christ was stoned. He did not die, I asked. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm saying that he was stoned. The question yes. I asked you is, yes. stone is to death. That's no, no, what no, the no, Jews did. No, 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 no problem. But hey, no, what I said initially was that the crucifixion, the Quran's case against crucifixion is as follows. It didn't say it didn't happen, by the way. No, I'm asking you where Jesus did not die. The Quran, no, no, no. You, wait, 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 wait. Let me make it clear so you, you don't have to that. You're saying that if the Bible is, if the Bible is, um, the, what the Quran teaches is that if you find anything in scripture that contradicts the Quran, which is not accepted. Okay? So, in Surah 4, 157, it says that he did he was not crucified, he did not die. Right. So we're asking you, can you show us um, from say like um, a secular source. Secular source or source. any source, Christian source, whichever source you want to use, that Jesus did not die. Yeah, so the Quran, just to be clear about what the Quran says, well like it should be halal. It says that it was made to appear like that. So in other words, the Quran doesn't say a crucifixion did not take place. I'll ask you the question again. No, no, Marvin, you're looking like you're walking it again. No, no, Jesus do, you mind walking again. do you mind if I... No, no I want yeah. you to answer the question. Yeah, I'm answering yeah. the question. The Quran's case against crucifixion is that it did happen, but it just didn't happen to Jesus Christ. 
I said, I said, I said, where it shows that he did not die. Okay, hold on. How do we know events happened in history? So show us how. Show us how many stories. How about Godwin? I'm, 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 I'm Yeah, yeah, right. right. So Godwin, as a historian, you know, yeah. show us you've the, done some training in history. Yeah? No. Okay, I have. Just, uh, I have. I have. So, so let me tell you, as so a historian. So you're being qualified, so you should be able to answer this. Yes, I okay. So let me tell you, as a historian, we, re we rely upon witness testimonies. Yeah? No. Yes or no? <laughs> yes, we do. Right. Yeah. So we have five hundred witnesses. Guys, we have witnesses. Yes. Yeah. So we have testimonies that Jesus was crucified. Yes. There's no I, doubt. Eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses. Yeah? yeah. That's what you said. No problem. Yeah. That's what the Quran affirms. Uh, that he died. No, no, no. The Quran affirms that a crucifixion happened, and that those individuals that saw Jesus being crucified were made to uh, think that yes, the Jesus was crucified. Such a so, so you see, so deceived. So but you admit that he deceived them. So Allah was deceived. Deceived. You admit that Allah deceived the people there to believe that well, Jesus was no, Allah would deceive oh. Jesus' own mother. So he deceived his own mother. Did he deceive? Can I answer your question? Yeah, go ahead. The Quran doesn't say Allah deceived them. It says, Walakin should be Now, do you want to make them to appear? Let me tell you what the difference is, right? There's in, in English language, you're an English teacher, yeah? Anyways, you're an English teacher. In English language, you know there's a difference between the active the active and passive, right? So if I say I closed the door, that's active. If I say the door was closed, that is passive. Okay, here's what the Quran says. It's, it's called Mebni, in Arabic, it's called Mebni al-Majul, which means to say it's using a passive, um, unknown, yes, thing to describe it. So for instance, where can Shubbi Halam? It was made to appear. It doesn't say Allah is Who the made one. it appear? No, no, hold on. But the Quran doesn't say. So, so, so we don't know who made it appear. Yes, we don't know. The Quran doesn't tell us. So the Quran is ambiguous. Yes. yes. In this case, so why does the Quran say? So, so, so was it not under Allah's sovereign will? Yeah. Was it not under Allah's sovereign You're using my words now. <laughs> Lizzy, let's let's be friendly to each other. I think I think that be nice. Don't run away from this. No problem. I'm here, right here. I'm right here. It is under whether it's passive or active. It is under Allah's sovereign. <laughs> you know the we're not going to say it yet. That he would deceive all of his followers and his own mother and make them think it was Jesus on the cross when it wasn't. Not only that, but he deceived billions of people down By the, the way, I, I'll help you. I, I, I will help you. Lizzie, I will help so you. So the reason why... So just that on its own, if, if let's, say, let's say for the sake of argument that's true, I don't think it's true, but let's say for the sake of argument that Muslims here, they want to believe that they think that's true, why on earth do you worship a God who is so deceitful? Okay, and if you no, think no he's not being deceitful, yes. even the Quran says that Allah is a deceiver. Well, no, let me correct you. Let me correct you. No, no, let, let, me, let me correct you on this, yeah. I think you're right to some extent. Okay, I'll tell you what. No, no, it's not. But I'll tell you what, I'll explain. Can I explain? Can I explain? No, Lizzie, look at me. I, I, I'll help you. You don't need to. Okay, guys. Okay, so, no, but I'll help you. Well, I'm, I'm saying, please I'll, answer the subject. I'll, I'll help. We've asked you where, give us a source. You know, if you guys talk over me and it's all three of you, then it's not fair. You, ask people the people, ask people the don't like. Okay, ask the Hijab, Hijab, okay. we just need sources. Okay, the Quran, says, the Quran says, in chapter 4 of the Quran, same place, uh, that they deceive you. Yeah, that they, Allah, He deceives them. Wait a minute. Well, I'm giving you. A, I'm giving. I'm helping you, mother. I, I, I'm giving you the, the real. We know. We know Allah's okay, You don't need to prove it to us. We want to know. Godwin. So you're not helping. Why Godwin. he deceived? Godwin. The reason we're Christians Godwin. today please. is because we believe Jesus died. Godwin, please. Do with that. Godwin, please. Do you, do you mind? Do you mind if I answer your question? Bro? I've let you speak. Come on, come on. Sir. If you want to be speed up, speed up. You're, you're speaking Arabic. You're you a bit. Get to the point. So, in Arabic language. And when you do something as a verb, it doesn't mean that you embody that thing as either an adjective or a noun. Let me give an example. So you, so if, uh, you uh, will allow an answer. The point is, whether passively or actively. Whether passively or actively. You're just saying no, 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 you don't bombard you're just somebody. You're just saying no, 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 no,
adjective or nouns, it doesn't matter whether adjectives or nouns or adverbs or whatever. We're not in grammar class here. The point is Allah We're not in grammar class. allows so people yeah. to be deceived into thinking that Jesus was crucified okay, when he wasn't. Hey, hey, uh, Why do Lizzie, you worship this deceiver? Okay, yes. fine. No problem. How do you Allah you has shown that yes, you can deceive the people by saying But it's not in No, no, I'm not interested. No, no, no. I, I'm, I, here's my question to you now. How is that a creedal disproving implication? We've asked you. It's not talking about the. Hold on. It's not talking about. Yes. It's not talking about the, the, the crucifixion. He never uses the word khida'ah uh, here in Arabic, which means inception. I'm talking generally, yes, the Quran affirms that Allah has the ability to deceive the, for example, the hypocrites. He deceived. Yes, he is. Allah. People. Yes, he so those, he, he no, he's talking about the hypocrites. Jesus' own yeah. mother? So no, it doesn't say that in the Quran. So, so, so wait, the Quran says, so, the Quran who did he, says, who did he so here's what I'm asking you guys. I'm asking you guys, so what? I'm asking you guys, if, yes, yes, this is my question. I'm asking you, if Allah can deceive people who are, who are attempting to deceive him and the other people, why is that necessarily a creedal disproving thing? Because, because why is that, how, how how can, that wrong? How can, how can a moral God in yeah. his nature yes, have yes. deception? Well, this one moral God no, no, has the ability. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. You guys are clever, yeah? Has God the ability to deceive people? Yes or no? That's not his nature at all. Has God got the ability to deceive the people? Yes or not no? Not in his nature. Is God got the That's what it means. Has God got the ability to deceive? Yes or no? What do you mean by that? I'm asking a question, they're not I'm saying he's not his nature. Has God got the ability to deceive? Yes or no? Do you have the ability Has to fly? God? No. No, he doesn't have the ability. No. Why? Because, because it's not in his nature. <laughs> I think this is done. <laughs> You're going to run off. He's running. Don't run. 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 Why are you running away? We're done, man. We're done, we're done. Our God never deceived. We're done. We're done. Your God deceived. Your God deceived. No, he never. Sorry. He allowed others to deceive. Yes, same thing. But he never deceived himself. That's not the same. Is that it? Is that all you want to say? That was the question you were asking. Allah is the best deceiver. So far, I've asked you, show us any source. Yes, go on. Last one. Give him one more chance. Let's see if he's going to show us some cordiality. One more time. Ask me a question now. We, I've asked a very simple question. Okay. Yeah. If God is, if God has the ability to receive, yes. How is that disproving God? Can I ask yeah, you, you're going to come to this. Okay. Okay. What I'm asking you? No, I just don't want to get run away from this. Okay. okay. So I'm not running away. So far, I'm, 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 okay. Tell me now. Give me one more, one more question. So far, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just summarizing what was happening. Have you got any other questions? questions? You know, We've, we've dealt with this. So, now. so far, we've asked you. We've asked we've dealt, you. Haven't we dealt okay. with it? Are you satisfied? Mohammed, Mohammed, are you satisfied? Stop, stop, stop. Why are you asking Muslims? Why, why, are you, why are you asking Muslims? Yes. Yeah. Of course, they're going to agree with you. Come on now. He's not a Muslim. Are you Muslim? No, 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 no. Put the camera on the brother. Okay. Put the camera on it. Why are you satisfied? Okay. 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 I'm on exactly. Anyways, so what? Okay. So, so what? So far. God can deceive the people. You said that. Hold on. You said so far. Anything else? What? You don't want to hear me speak. Do you not want to hear me speak? He can deceive. He has the ability to deceive. But our God doesn't. Our God is truthful and honest in all circumstances. So he cannot deceive. No. Your, your God cannot. No, he can't. He, and be, he, he, can, he can become a man. He can become a man. Yes. <laughs> he can become no, a man. I don't understand. I don't understand, what, I don't understand the, the difference. He created man. Yes, you know that. Man. So why? Why he is never it created logically deception. Why is it logically impossible for a, an all powerful he's he's God to deceive? Shift. Because his nature is truth. Can God do everything? Truth cannot can, have deception. Can God do everything? Yes, he can. Yes. In okay, his nature. Can he deceive? In his nature. Can he deceive? It's not in his nature to deceive. Can you fly? Can you fly? Can you fly, Muhammad? Can you fly? Muhammad, can you fly? Can you fly? Is it in your nature to can you, fly? Yes, I can fly. You can fly. Show, show us, come on. Muhammad, you jab. This way, this way. Go on, fly, 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 fly. Show us, fly, fly, fly. Show us, fly, fly, fly. Show us, fly, fly, fly.
Go go flag drop. This is me. Oh, no, no. Oh, he's the no, no. He's the he he jump, he jump. Wait, wait. We don't want you to levitate. We don't want you to levitate. No, but, no, no. Listen. Wait, one sec. Please, hold on, hold on. It's not Shahid. It's not Is it John? It's not This is how Allah is. This is me. He would deceive you. He says he can fly, but he can't fly. This is me on the plane. Right, so you feel like Allah the deceiver. By the way, Allah the deceiver. This is me on the plane. By the way, this is my uh, Facebook. Turn, turn into a joke. Hey, yes, brothers. Brother Muhammad Hijab. Christians, so you, you, you must fly. Fly. All of this. You can't fly. So, Your so God is a deceiver. Our God is the truth. You need to fly. So are we just, comparing hold on, me with God? Hold on. <laughs> are we just saying that it's not in God's nature to fly? So, Guys, so far, you right. have not given us one source, hey. okay, to show. But Jesus can did not that. No, who he you will. Not, you're not sure. God can you deceive sure that who he you will. Given us you disagree. Sure. You haven't given us so you disagree. This is his Wait nature. Wait a minute. His nature he can so deceive. God can deceive can who he will. But let's wow. think about the who he chooses to deceive. He can deceive who he, he will. He chooses to use the monastic Jesus. The only thing in the Jesus, Quran, the only thing in the Quran which references God deceiving the people is just hypocrisy. To use Jesus, his most beloved prophet, to deceive people. Like the Old Testament. Billions. Do you want to bring out the Old Testament? How many people have been deceived? Okay. Words, he's, That's, um, and you're supposed to reveal Jesus as a prophet, Where, but let me explain. For crucifixion public events. No, the, the, I'm telling you once again, for those Bro. who don't know the Arabic language, what I know the you? Arabic language. I'm telling you, I'm educating you, what, I'm, you know I'm, I'm teaching you. Let because your teacher speak. How can you say Let he only deceived speak. the people there if it was a public event? Listen, exactly. Exactly. The Quranic verse in question, in chapter 4, verse 157, in Arabic it's called Mabni al Majhul, which means to say, read it. No, I don't the same No, hold on, not this verse. Not this verse. But he can only receive the hypocrites. You know this verse? No, no, no. You said, are you listening? No, no, but you are falling. You're falling down with your standards. You're the bad student. He's a bad student. Mohammed, don't deceive the people. Don't deceive the people. Listen, if you want to hear to if you want to be a good student, are you planning to deceive the people? If you want to be a good student, give them the truth. Monday, Monday to Friday, you can have your students. Sundays, <laughs> no, 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 no. Student here. you're the student. So listen, I'm a student. Where are the same so, so the, 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 the only thing I can so learn like, from so you. you the only right. thing I can learn from you is how not to understand. Okay. Right? All right. Now here's what I'll tell you. Four one five seven. Here's the Arabic. The Arabic word is Kedah. Yeah. Show me. The only place in the Quran which is used reference to God is in chapter four of the Quran. It says, Only one verse, and it's talking about the Munafiqun, which is the hypocrites. Now. Where does it say the hypocrites? Where does it say? Where? Where? Show us. So, so, so four one five seven. No, 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 no. So he received them in four one five seven. It doesn't say that. Where does it say that? Show me. Re 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 who re made it appear? Yeah, no. Who, it doesn't say who made to it. To look like well, it was Jesus. So, so who, okay, okay, who made it appear? It's, it's, the Quran says, "Well, like it should be Allah." So who did? Who did? It's, 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 it's not specified. It's Mabni al Majul. So, so, so who it was there? made? It says it was made to appear like that. Yeah, exactly. By who? By who? Who had the power to stop Allah? To stop Allah from the guy doesn't understand. No, All right, do you understand? Do you understand? We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Who made it appear to the Christians? Who made it appear? Allah not have control over what happened on the crucifixion. Allah had no control. No, it's very clear. It's very clear that the one who made it appear is God Himself. How, how can someone else be higher than God yeah. and make it appear to be in Jesus? Anyway, basically, Muhammad Hijab has just run away from the fact that Allah is the most deceitful of deities because he would use Jesus, his most beloved prophet, the Muslims tell us that they love more than we do, in order to tell people that he was going to die on the cross for their sins. But when it comes to the 11th hour, it's not actually him on the cross, he's taken up to heaven. He even his own mother who's watching him, that Allah would actually be that deceitful to Christians through the ages, to Jesus' own family, uh, and that Jesus' his beloved prophet uh, is kind of somehow complicit. And this to me just shows me what uh, a deceitful God Allah is, and actually how he's set up the Quran, somebody I'm not, I don't recognize, is a deceiver as well. Why on earth would you come to this religion that's so full of deceit? But I want to bring up something that we didn't quite have the opportunity uh, to talk to Muhammad Hijab about, because he said, oh, well, well, the God of the Old Testament lies as well. Now, I know what he's referring to, but it's not what he, th it, he thinks it's saying. He's talking about, this is 1 Kings 22, really, yeah, right? Cool. Which is Micaiah, right? The prophet Micaiah and Ahab. Don't forget, Ahab was one of the most wicked kings of Israel. He was under the judgment of God because he was so wicked, okay? 
And this is Yahweh sending Ahab effectively to his death. Basically, there are prophets in Israel, all of them false prophets. They were saying, yes, 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 uh, go and attack, uh, what's the name of the place, Ramoth Gilead. Go and attack Ramoth Gilead. You know, you'll be successful, you'll be successful. And uh, there's one prophet, Micaiah, that says, no, you won't. But basically, in God's sovereignty, uh, he wants Ab Ahab to die, to come under his judgment and die for all his wickedness. And how does he do this? He actually sends a lying spirit. So this is not God himself, notice. Exactly. This is not God himself, but in his sovereignty, he is sovereign over everything that happens in the earth. God is sovereign even over what Satan does. But this is the thing. He, let's read the scripture together, okay? The Lord said, who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this and another that. Finally, a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. By what means, the Lord asked. I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouths of his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord, so go and do it. So now the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Listen to that. Basically, this is part of God bringing judgment against someone who is already deeply in rebellion to him. Okay? This is not the same thing. This is what of, of um, the Lord himself being the author of something so deceptive as the cross. The Lord himself being the author um, of something so deceptive as making Jesus fool people for, many, for the thousands of years that he wasn't who he said he was. Okay, But it is showing that Yahweh is sovereignty even over evil and actually sometimes that Yahweh has people over who are already wicked, who are already in mind for judgment to be uh, subject to evil themselves. Exactly. Just for cl clarity purposes, the Bible says that there is no darkness in God. Yeah. Our God doesn't have darkness. So deception is part of darkness. The reason why God cannot lie is because it's associated with darkness. It's lying. So if Muhammad Ijab is believing in a God that can deceive, how does he know that the same God is not deceiving him about his eternity? But how can you follow a God who's deceiving you, who's, that, who's got the ability to deceive, which means he can deceive you about your eternity? The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no deception in him. No deception. Yeah, did Jesus deceive anybody? No. No. He came for the truth. He tells us the truth plainly. He tells us the truth plainly. There's no lies found in his mouth. He shows us what Allah is really like. And not Allah. Ah! He shows us what Yahweh is really like. Muslims need Yahweh. They do not need Allah. Repent. Hallelujah. Praise God.